is the Bible. If we get into God's Holy Word, and if you just open the Bible and begin to read it, you read Psalms, you read any of these verses, we will find peace and joy come into our heart and life. God's gift to us is not a mystery. Jesus' first coming was prophesied in the Old Testament, hundreds of years before He came. First, it was mentioned as He would come through the seed of a woman. In Genesis, the third chapter, the 15th verse. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Through the line of Abraham, Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. And Abram picked up and moved. So we've got to trust completely what God tells us to do. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he says, get out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. He didn't even know where he was going. The Lord would tell him when to stop. And I will make of thee a great nation. And of course, he's talking about each of us who become this, uh, believe Jesus Christ, become his disciples. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Isaiah tells us of a son. Mary had several sons. But there's only one son that God gave us was his son. Isaiah tells us of a son, God's son, that would be given to us that we might have a full and abundant life. If you're not having a full and abundant life, you're not following the Word of God, we're getting excited about all the things in this world that we don't need. And that our joy might be full. He says, I've come that you might have life abundantly and that you might have full joy. For Isaiah tells us in the ninth chapter, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and peace from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. We know by the scriptures that Jesus is going to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. As we find in Micah 5, 2, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, Ephrata means a small tribe. Even Bethlehem was small, but they were from a little tribe in there. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel. And the people were crying and screaming for a leader. They wanted a powerful leader to get them under the rule of the Romans and get them back in charge. But he came to a different world unto be as ruler in Israel whose going forth have been from old and from everlasting. Can God use non-religious people to help us, to guide us? Of course. A non-religious king was a part of God's plan for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. In Luke 2, 1, And it came to pass in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And we see this portrayed here, all the birth of Jesus. As wonderful as the first coming was, so will be his second coming. Remember, Jesus who died is coming again. We have to be prepared for that day. You know, Job, one of the first books written in all the Bible, 
He says, I know that he's coming again because he told us in Job 19.25, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Isn't that something? Job prophesied, one of the oldest books in the Old Testament. In all of the Bible, he prophesied that Jesus would come and stand again upon this earth. Now Jesus in Matthew 24 discusses the end time. If you want to know about the end time, don't read the whole book of Revelation. Read the 24th chapter of Matthew. And I'm going to read a couple of verses out of there. And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Will there be any doubt that God is coming again when He gives us that sign? If we see the sun and the moon and the stuff falling on the earth, you know, they're going to be hailstones, a hundred pounds falling. You want to be outside then? You want to be outside God's circle? I don't think so. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn because they haven't accepted Jesus as Savior. Again, if you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. We beg and plead with you to accept the seed that God is sowing. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. While he was here on earth, Jesus told us many wonderful things that would give us a full and abundant life, life of joy. You know, it would really be great if we had someone who represented Jesus to tell us those wonderful things again. It would be if we could find somebody that would give us that story of Jesus and His love. Because we know that He's coming again and that God wants us to know the truth. Do you know what things Jesus told us earlier? And can you remember some of the things that he told us? He said that you have to be born again. And he tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. How many other wonderful things has Jesus told us over the years? So we find that we would like to know those things. We'd like for Jesus to explain to us again. Would it make a greater impact if Jesus were to come and tell us the things that He wants us to know? You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are full of the things that He would have us to know. So we're looking forward to the day when He comes again and stands before us and tells us the things that we need to know. Would it be great? Who do you think would do that? Who would come to tell us about Jesus? Well, you got the pastor. <laughs> what? You got the pastor? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can tell you. But it would be exciting if he would come forth. So we're looking forward to a special time that stands before us when Jesus would give us all the things that he has made known to us. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe you can help us. Yes. Many ask, what would Jesus say if he were here today? <clears throat> Many feel my message and teachings would be different as the times appear different from over 2,000 years ago. I say it to you, 
that my Father's words, as they are written in the Bible, are as true today as they were in the past. Take comfort in knowing that each of you is offered salvation and eternal life in my Father's heavenly kingdom. I ask not that you believe. I demand that you believe and follow my Father's commands. They are not set forth as guidelines to follow when they are convenient. They are to be treated as absolutes all the time. My message is the same today as it was in the past. It will never waver. Amen. Here are some of my teachings to take forth, to live by, and share with the lost. And know that I am with you always. Yes, until the end of time. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Amen. Trust in God. Trust also in me. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the world and suffer the loss of his soul? But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you <coughs> so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. <coughs> but I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. I think I just read that. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And know that I am with you always. Yes to the end of time. Amen. Blessed are the weak, for they will inherit the earth. All the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and so on, are summed up in this single command. You must love your neighbor 
as yourself. Each of you must make a choice. Will you follow your will or my Father's will? Will you live on faith and take up your cross and follow me? Celebrate my birth, but honor my death and resurrection. May my Father bless you as he blessed me, his Son. Amen.